Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. Newcastle United, the takeover takes another twist. This is an ownership that is determined to bring major trophy competition to Newcastle. They're not going to mess about and the only thing that could halt them is, um, well, I say financial fair play and nearly break into laughter. But there are rules in place, but they're not going to be as severe for Newcastle as you might think. As much as Newcastle fans don't like the ownership of Mike Ashley, there actually are positives from his tenure that mean that Newcastle could spend up to £200 million in January and the following transfer window in the summer. So not too bad. How are they going to spend that money and how can Newcastle spend their way to into competition as quick as possible? Because they're not going to get Mbappe, they're not going to get Haaland, they're not going to get that level of player when they can't offer Champions League football. And they're not going to be able to offer Champions League football next season. They're not finishing top four. So, you know, what can they bring in? Well, they can still bring in quite a lot. But why can they spend £200 million, first of all? So financial fair play for what it matters... Apparently, you can not have losses of more than 103 million for your last three years. So Newcastle haven't had any losses. They've made a 38 million pound profit, in fact. So Newcastle could spend 100 million because over the last three years, that would be fine and within their within their remits. They've also made a profit, which takes that up to about 138 million because of the 38 million profit. And on top of that, they've, uh, they've they're allowed a 50 million pound bonus on their spending because of the money that was spent on their youth structure. So Newcastle can spend around 190 million pounds um, straight away. And that's going to be the challenge for Newcastle's owners is to create a system where they can spend the billions of pounds they've got. Because look, Newcastle's owners could start spending 10 billion on, on players right here, right now. They've got the money. But what they've got to do is find a way to get that money um, allowable within the rules that exist. And the best way of doing that is, of course, generating income, getting sponsors to pay silly money to sponsor shirts and things like that, which we will see in the longer term. But they're not in a bad situation in the shorter term because they can spend well over 150 million quid for the reasons I've just said there. So who are they going to look at for? You know, people are mentioning people like Anthony Martial and James Madison and um, Nick Pope and people like this. But I actually think that that how they build a team is going to be really, really important to how big they build. And what I mean by that is if they if you add Jesse Lingard and Nick Pope and James Tarskovsky to, to that Newcastle side, I don't think that makes them better than Everton or Villa. And that's the problem that Newcastle have got immediately, is that when Man City and Chelsea took this on upon themselves, yeah, you had the Man United, you had the Arsenals, but you didn't really have much more than that. All right, Spurs a little bit, um, and Liverpool, of course, but... You know, the Villas and the Evertons of this world weren't as strong as they are now because Villa and Everton have got money. So I think Newcastle's challenge is going to be a very interesting story to watch. It might not be a nice story to watch, but I would watch this story from the start and, you know, see how it goes. Because I think it's the new blueprint. There's a lot more competition. There's a lot more money in the Premier League. And there's probably seven or eight or nine teams in the Premier League now that have got good squads, good players and would consider consider themselves as competitors for, for being in the top six. And I think teams like Everton and Villa, certainly with Leicester and Arsenal and Spurs, feel that they are in that top nine beyond the traditional top four of the moment, which is Man City, Man United, Liverpool and Chelsea. So Newcastle's first job is to get into that, is to infiltrate that top nine. Now, look, I, knew, I look at that current Newcastle side, look at the manager, Steve Bruce, and I look at that team and I think there's not a lot in there. St Maximum, definitely... I mean, Callum Wilson for me? No, not really. I don't see a lot of talent in that team. So their first step is, can they buy a team to compete with an Everton and a Villa? And you look at an Everton and a Villa and they've got Calvert-Lewin, they've got Ricarlison, they've got Alan, they've got Decore, they've got Yerry Mina and Villa. They've got Mings, not Ing, they've got Mings, they've got Ings, they've got Mings and Ings, they've got Watkins, they've got McGinn. They've got, they've got, a, they've got a number of players that make them already stronger than Newcastle. So Newcastle's first thing is to try and surpass those teams as quick as possible to say you know to get into the Europa League or something like that and I think this is where Newcastle can act very cleverly in the transfer market in January and if they can bring an Anthony Martial in for 40 million and they can bring a Kessie in and they can bring a Coutinho in and they can bring in a Nick Pope and they can bring in a centre-back and they you know and they can start to build a spine that's what Newcastle need to do the spine. You want your goalkeeper, you want a top class centre back, a top class midfielder, and another top class striker. And, you know, maybe you could bring a Lingard or a Madison in as a number 10. And that's what Newcastle need to do quickly because what Newcastle will find is they're going to basically have to buy a whole new team. And that whole new team will, first of all, be competing with Arsenal, Villa, 
Everton, Spurs, Leicester to get to being fifth. And then when you do that, you then can try and compete with Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, uh, not Liverpool, not Arsenal, Liverpool and um, Man City. So I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I, I look, if I'm absolutely honest, I've got no love for Newcastle, but I've got no hate for Newcastle. I think it's going to be a very interesting watch to see how quickly they can do it. They definitely can do it. They're the richest club in the world. But it's not going to be as easy as you think. And I think the fact that they can legally spend just under £200 million in January obviously gives them a good start. But what can you get with that money? Because what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do, when you've got to buy an entire team, you don't want to spend that £190 million on two or three players. And I don't think they'll need to because Coutinho, Barcelona will want to take the money. And Barcelona is a club I'd look at if I was Newcastle, by the way, because they're desperate for money and you might get some decent players. I mentioned Kessie, AC Milan, out of contract in the summer. Why not say to AC Milan, you're going to lose him for free in the summer. Take 10, 15 million now. You get a really good midfielder there. Zakaria has not gone to Roma yet. Maybe you look at him. Kamara at Marseille, another midfielder. You can definitely get him. In fact, that's the sort of player Newcastle tradition that he would have got a few years ago. Obviously, Lingard's available. Maybe an Eric Bay, maybe an Anthony Martial from my club. But there's plenty of others. Nick Pope, Dean Henderson, a decent centre back. Look, they could go for Tarkov skill. They could look at somebody like a Skriniar from Inter. They could look at, you know, there's. I think what. What I would hope Newcastle would do, and I say hope because I'm not a Newcastle fan, but I think Newcastle might have it have to do it differently. I look at Man City and Chelsea. They spent a lot of money because there wasn't a lot of competition other than the big clubs. There is competition now. And I think almost the new world is going to be about volume and value for money because the more value money for money you get, the more money you can spend in the future. Why spend £80 million on James Madison when you could get Jesse Lingard for 20 million because he's only got six months left on his contract. You know, why spend 80 million on Declan Rice when you could spend 10 million, 20 million on a Chuamini or someone like that? And I think this is the this is going to be the really interesting thing with Newcastle. Not that they've got the money, but do they do what Man City did and appoint people into that club who know football? Because if you get people who know football and you've then got the money. They don't need to spend 50, 60, 70, 80 million pounds on a player. They can actually make a lot of signings and utilise that money in a very, very clever way now that they've got the pull. And I certainly think, you know, I'll tell you who would have been a very good signing for Newcastle and I could have seen it happening. Basuma. Basuma would have been very good. Obviously, he's got this issue with Brighton, but I think that sort of a player would have been a good signing for Newcastle. Um, and I think that's the sort of player that they will look at, the Kessie, the Pope, Maybe the Lingard, certainly the Coutinho's, that sort of thing. And it'd be interesting if they... I mean, I think Anthony Martial, you know, talking on the United Stand, I think he would be very good as well. But I think Newcastle could, even in January... And they've got to spend in January. I think the January transfer market's going to be very interesting, but probably only very interesting around the North East. Newcastle, their owners, there's no point in waiting. What's the point in waiting till the summer? Why wait? There are deals that can be done in January and they've got the money to do it. So I think Newcastle are going to start in January and they're going to use every bloody transfer window they can. And what they'll also be doing is they'll be looking at ways that they can expand how much they spend. But as I said, I wouldn't even... You know, look, Newcastle fans will probably be very happy that they know they can legitimately spend over £150 million if they want to. But that's going to be... They'll find ways of increasing that each year with sponsorship and everything like that and revenue streams, etc. But the actual interesting thing is, it's not even it's for me, it's not gonna be how much money Newcastle spend. It's gonna be the the people that they appoint. And look, as sad as it is, Steve Bruce needs to be sacked. And not because Steve Bruce I don't feel sorry for Steve Bruce, but Steve Bruce ain't gonna win you a Premier League title. You know, when Man City when Pep leaves Man City, I don't think Steve Bruce will even be on the short list. He won't be on the long list, he won't be on a list. Um, so, you know, they, they need to look at that because ultimately, what's the point in bringing players in if you haven't got a manager? So I think Steve Bruce should go soon. And look, ruthlessness is important. Man City did it with Mark Hughes. I think Newcastle are going to have to do it with Steve Bruce. He'll get a good payoff, I'm sure. Um, and then they can start making the signings. But as I said, I think the, the interesting thing will be Newcastle, I can't see they're, they're going to be money men who don't know what they're doing. I think they're going to look at this and deal with it properly and they will bring in some of the best football directors, scouts they can buy to not only be about buying... Yeah, I'm sure their dream in the future is to buy an Mbappe or a Haaland, but 
they can go a long way in making value for money signings like a Kessie, like a Kamara, you know, players that are coming towards the end of their contract, maybe a Zakaria as well, Chuamini from Monaco. I wouldn't be surprised if they're looking at him. They're the sort of signing that, you know, Monaco will happily take 30 million and Newcastle will happily give it them. They're, of course, they've got to sell. They've got to sell the club and say, look, you know, it's a, it's a difficult, you know, it's a project, but this is where we're heading and we're heading here fast. And the better players Newcastle can get in as quick as possible, then the quicker they'll start moving up. But I'll repeat what I said at the start of the video. It's going to be a very interesting watch because when Man City and Chelsea did it, the volume of competition was different to what it is now. I look at the Premier League, I see a lot of rich clubs. I look at the Premier League and I see Leicester spending money, Villa spending money, Everton spending money, obviously Arsenal, Spurs spending money. None of those clubs are top four clubs. So that's five clubs I've named there. And I've not even mentioned West Ham, who don't really spend a lot of money, but they're still a, they're still a team with a lot of good players in it. So there's 10 clubs there. And people say, oh, Newcastle are going to be fighting for the title inside five years. They probably are. But their first quest is to get comfortably into the top six and then look at the top four. And they've got the money to do it, but it's how they spend that money that's going to be interesting as to how long it takes for them to get through. Because let's put some respect onto the Arsenals, the Spurs, the Villas, the Evertons, the Leicesters, the West Hams, because those are the sort of clubs that are going to be the first challenge for Newcastle. And Newcastle's current eleven isn't anywhere near a Villa 11 or a West Ham 11 or an Arsenal 11. And, you know, that's before you get to the top four that we have. So it's going to be very interesting to see. They have got the money to spend, but I think the first thing they need to do is get the coach in that they want and get the football people in that they want so that they can start to make a few signings. And as I said, you know, to be absolutely blunt, with Newcastle, it's not about buying two or three players for loads of money. Volume is key. They need a whole new team, basically. And the sooner they can get that whole new team, the sooner they'll climb the league. And that's basically what you're doing. You know, I, don't, I hope that there isn't a Newcastle fan there saying, Look, I hope we can keep a lot of the players that we've got. The players that you've got are in a relegation battle for a reason. You need to completely revamp that team apart from two or three players. And the way you're going to do that is buying players. And the quicker you do that, the quicker your development will happen. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And I think they will start spending in January. I could see them... The question is how many they'll bring in in January. And I think that depends on how quickly they change the manager. Because if they change the manager quickly, they could bring five, six, seven players in in January. And it'll be very interesting to see. Anyway, get your thoughts in below. Who do you think is going to be the next manager? How many players do you think they're going to get in January? And let's have a look at some of your comments on who they think they're going to be. Me, I've got a funny feeling they'll get Kessie. I wouldn't be surprised if they went for Chiamini or Kamara from France. Um, I think that Martial's an interesting one and would be a very good one if Martial fancied it. Nick Pope as well in goal. Um, the centre back's interesting, um, but look, I think I think they will be looking to spend and spend quick because that's basically what they're there to do. Smash a like on the video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll speak to you all soon.